differentiation standard C3 derivatives. Inside the brackets here is a standard linear function raised to a power. Now we could use the binomial expansion, get individual terms and differentiate them all. And that would be an AS maths sort of method for a question like this, a very long method. This is quite a standard problem because we have y is equal to some linear function, so AX plus B, where A and B are constants, A is the coefficient of X, and all of this raised to a power N. Then dy by dx is equal to the coefficient of x multiplied by the power. So you can write that as a times n or n times a, it doesn't matter, times the inside function in the brackets there. So that's ax plus b raised to the power of, and you know when you differentiate you always reduce the power by 1. So this will be n minus 1 here. So if we apply this formula to this problem, the a, the coefficient of x, is 2. n, the power, is 4. And then we have the original function there to the power of n minus 1, so 4 minus 1, 3. So then we can simplify this as 8 times 2x plus 5 to the power of 3. Now this formula always applies as long as you have a linear function inside the brackets raised to a power. And for the linear function there's no necessity for the x term to go first and then the constant on this side. I could equally have this to begin with and the solution is exactly the same. The a times the n here, a is the coefficient of x, the coefficient of x is 2, so that 2 is there, times the power 4. A common mistake at this point is to think that because in the formula you always write the a in this position, is then to think, well, that's a, and that's the power, so when you multiply them together to do 5 times 4 and put 20 here, well that's wrong. The a here is just the coefficient of x, which in this case is here. Okay, let's have a look at what happens if that symbol there, well that sign there was a minus and not a plus. OK, so I'm going to change that to a minus. So if we have 5 minus 2x, now the coefficient of x is minus 2. So you have to take the sign with it. It's minus 2 times the x. So here, it's minus 2 times 4. So this becomes minus 8 here. And let me just move the order of these terms around so it all matches what I've got there. That was 5 minus 2x. And that's what I've got here. Now you could just memorize this formula. But there is a more useful formula that you could memorize and ignore this one. The problem with this formula is that you have a linear function raised to a power. And this formula only works for linear functions. Now an alternative is this. y is equal to, and then I'm going to put something in the brackets there. There's the power that you had there, n. But instead of writing a linear function inside, I'm going to write any function of x. There. 
this we'll see is more useful than this and it can be used to differentiate anything that you would have applied this to as well as any other function of x raised to a power okay so let's put this to the side and focus on this so dy by dx dy by dx is equal to n the power comes to the front and then you differentiate your f of x inside the brackets so because it's in function notation that's going to be f dash x and then you multiply by all of this but to the power of n minus 1 there you go let's apply this now to one of our previous example okay so this is what we want to differentiate so dy by dx is equal to and as you can see we've got a function of x inside the brackets just as you have here and you have a power so in the formula n comes first so that's the power there's n and then you differentiate what's inside the brackets so if you differentiate 5 plus 2x that will just give you 2 differentiating the 5 gives you 0 differentiate differentiating 2x will give you 2 so I've just multiplied by the derivative of this part okay so that's done and now you've got the original function and the original function was all of this inside the brackets so that's 5 plus 2x and to the power of n minus 1 so to the power of 3 so that will give 8 brackets 5 plus 2x to the power of 3 so as you can see we've got the same result as we had previously and I'll show you the previous result now here so there's no real need to use this formula when we have a formula that's more powerful and can be applied to many more different functions than just linear functions like here okay here's another problem to solve here clearly inside the brackets this is not a linear function but we can still differentiate this very easily using this formula so dy by dx is equal to so starting with the power n which is 5 there times the derivative of the function inside the brackets so if I differentiate everything inside the brackets here the 2 gives you nothing x squared will give you 2x x cubed will give you 3x squared so that's that part done and then brackets what was inside the brackets all, all there so that's 2 plus x squared plus x cubed to the power of n minus 1 n was 5 so n minus 1 is 4 okay differentiating this function here raised to a power of 3 so we have a power that comes to the front and then we have the derivative of what's inside the brackets so differentiating 1 gives you nothing differentiating minus e to the 2x will give you minus 2 e to the 2x and then what we have in the original function there 1 minus e to the 2x to the power of n minus 1 and then just multiplying the 3 with the minus 2 there just simplifying okay now moving on we want to differentiate this exponential function so we need another standard formula for differentiating exponentials and a very useful formula is this so y is equal to e to the power of any function of x 
so we can have any terms here to do with x yeah, any function of x here like this so dy by dx is equal to the derivative of the f of x f dash x times the original function there. Okay, that's the standard formula. So applying that to our problem here, so then we've got dy by dx is equal to f dash x, meaning that I have to differentiate x squared minus 2. And if you differentiate x squared minus 2, you just get 2x. So this times e to the power of, this is all of the original part there, x squared minus 2. There you go, differentiated. As you can see, this is simple when you know the formula. OK, another exponential problem here. So applying the formula again, so dy by dx is equal to, just ignore that 3 for the time being, just focus on this part here. So differentiating the 1 minus 2x will just give you minus 2. That's this part done. Times e to the power of f of x times e to the power of our function of x here. So e to the power of 1 minus 2x. And as you can see here, we're multiplying by 3. So I'm going to multiply by 3 here. So when you simplify this, you've got minus 6 e to the power of 1 minus 2x. So if you're multiplying your exponential with some constant there, you just multiply the derivative by the same constant. OK, differentiating logs, but specifically logs to the base e. So in this case, y is equal to lin x cubed minus 1. So to differentiate this, we need a standard formula. So let's say y is equal to then any function of x. So I'm just going to put f of x here. Then dy by dx is equal to f dash x. So the derivative of this divided by f of x. And as you can see, the result has no logs. You had a log to begin with, but the derivative has no logs. And this is a very important formula. You'll see this um, in integration a lot as well. So if you, if you integrate something that looks like this, that the, the top looks like the derivative of the bottom here, then you end up with a log once you've integrated. So um, uh, memorize this as well. Now let's apply this to our problem here. So dy by dx is equal to, and we're going to have a fraction. So if I differentiate the x cubed minus 1, which just gives me 3x squared, and then I divide by x cubed minus 1, that's the derivative. Again, as you can see, this is not difficult as long as you know the formula. If you don't know the formula, you'll be completely clueless here. You won't know what to do. OK, another example, an easier one, just differentiating lin x. So let's apply the same rule as before. Uh, f dash x, so if we differentiate x, we get 1, and then divided by f of x. So just divide by x, and that's all you have. OK, next problem, differentiating and then x squared. So fraction again. Differentiate x squared to get 2x. And that's going to be divided by x squared, which is f of x. And we can simplify this to 2 over x. 
Now I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing exactly the same question. So this time, instead of starting with y is equal to lin x squared, I'm going to use one of the rules of logs and bring the 2 to the front, bring that power to the front, so you've got this. So dy by dx is equal to, ignoring the 2 for the time being, if you just differentiate lin x, you get 1 over x. Because we were multiplying by 2, if I multiply this by 2, the 2 multiplies with the numerator to give you 2 over x. Exactly the same answer. So now that you've seen a few rules for differentiation for C3, what are the applications? Well, they're pretty much what you did in uh, AS Maths. So once you've differentiated them, something and you've got its derivative, so you've worked out this, you could be able uh, well, you could be asked to work out the equation of the tangent, or a normal, to your curve at a particular point. Uh, you could be, uh, um, like be asked to work out what stationary points. There could be one, there could be multiple, so stationary point or stationary points. What you'll see is, um, uh, as you learn, more ways of differentiating various different functions. Eventually you're going to learn how to differentiate um, uh, sine, cos, tan, other trig functions. Uh, these are the standard applications. Working out equations of tangents, normals, and coordinates for stationary points, and so on.